So I'm standing in front of a Yankee Candle Company storefront, but this isn't just any Yankee Candle. This location actually has a little bit of history to it. In 1986, this Yankee Candle storefront opened its doors to the public and made it the first satellite Yankee Candle store, meaning after the flagship, this was the first Yankee Candle Company store located here in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. So let's go inside. Look at this floor. Do you hear that? All is bright. Is this something you would burn for Christmas or New Year's? When will you be burning all is bright? wax dipper. I'm not quite sure of what the name is, but you essentially pick one of these, dip it into colored wax. It's very warm, so it's already going. And then you chill it down by dipping it in the cool water right there. This place almost reminiscent of uh, the flagship Deerfield, almost like a mini Deerfield flagship store. Let me tell you, certain evenings in Napa Valley, not mornings, but evenings, looked exactly like this vineyard. Beautiful, beautiful photo. You see, this is a Happy Tonight, a part of the Winter Wonderland collection. Is the paraffin wax looking more marbleized recently than it used to? Marbleized in that it has a little bit of luster to it, it has some shine. You know what I mean by luster, right? Are they putting some form of metallic compounds in there? Something to make it shine. You can even move down here. And uh, this might even be a, a better illustration of what I mean. So not only are they selling Yankee Candle products, but also like the flagship in Deerfield, selling other companies' products as well. Some bath and body items here. Have you guys ever used uh, these folks products. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I won't try Forbidden apple tarts They got two of them Just in case you need one Let me get your opinion on something. What was your thought on this wine collection this wine and candle pairing line that they put out it didn't seem to get much attention now there's another place out back. It's kind of more of an outlet, they told me. So I'm gonna go check that out. And there we go. Let me tell you. The selection here is incredible. I was looking everywhere for this candle, for the It's a Wonderful Life screening. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. One that I certainly always wanted to get, just for fun, and uh, never really got around to it. This is exciting. Look what they have. Not crisp fall nights, they have the European Autumn Night with the full size label and photograph. 
I am very tempted to buy one of those, and they have plenty. Bony Bunch. We got Bony Bunch. And check it out. These are from this year, 2016. 50% off. Lavalier or lapel microphone, we've seen these before, right? It just clips onto your shirt. This really helps isolate my voice from all other ambient sounds. The problem is there is an extraordinary amount of wind today. Sorry about the wind. Uh, hopefully we're gonna take care of that in just a little bit. And I don't anticipate it getting any better. In the film world, you have something called the dead cat, which is essentially a piece of fake fur. But what I'm gonna try to do is take this hat. Which one? and insert the microphone inside of this ball. This is going to help muffle that sound, but I have to fashion this. Let's see what I can do. I'm gonna slice off this little fuzz ball. Stage voice to the left, stage voice to the right. Heavy wind. Shopping cart, shopping cart. I just simply have the fake fur wrapped around the lapel microphone with a rubber band. I just did some tests. Walmart hand fashioned dead cat uh, wind protective microphone cover all for under $10. So I booked a room. They had a vacancy at the Sturbridge Host Hotel and Conference Center on Cedar Lake. Beds. It's always two beds. Oh my god. Look at this. Ah. Are those winter berries? This is Cedar Lake. Something that I've always wanted to do is visit Sturbridge, Massachusetts. Now, Sturbridge, not to be confused with Stockbridge, is the home of Old Sturbridge Village, which is an historic amusement park that celebrates the late 18th century to the mid 19th century. I've never been there, but I've always heard about it. They are having some very appropriate holiday Christmas festivities tonight. So I'm gonna charge up this camera and we're gonna head on over to Old Sturbridge Village where they're celebrating something pretty special tonight. Christmas by candlelight at Old Sturbridge Village. I told you that this was a very appropriate destination. Costumed historians will help you understand the past and its relation to the present. All right, I'm excited. I like costumes. Buddy, not gonna take the camera, are you? Can't take the camera. Oh, you're so soft. Isn't it cold in here? So, what do they call you around here? 
Huh? A donkey? Okay, so we got the lighting of the Christmas tree. It is cold, that is for sure. So without setting myself on fire, I've come over by the fire that they have here and I could smell this thing from uh, all the way across the park. Very fragrant, absolutely beautiful. Can't tell you the last time I've been in this kind of weather and actually had a fire like this and having those carolers in the background right there really adding to that experience for sure. So let me try to paint you a portrait of what is going on. When they say old Sturbridge village, they're not kidding. What they have set up here is an actual old timey village, a huge circle with houses and exhibitions everywhere you go. In the center of the square, they have the fire and the carolers. The tree that they lit was way up front. This is much more than an hour or two of entertainment. And I mean, look at this. Is this unbelievable or what? Don't see that every day. At least I don't see that every day. So a real pleasant surprise. They have this one room that's completely decorated with handmade gingerbread houses. And it's a contest. Uh, and you can go around and judge and pick which house you think is the best execution, or I guess the most delicious, the best looking. But what's so fantastic is not only does this room smell like gingerbread and baked goods, but you're getting all of these sweet confection smells as you walk around, all of these familiar candies from childhood, Necco wafers, snow caps, you see those? Did you grow up with these? Gumdrops? It's the best use of, I'm guessing, cinnamon toast crunch, gobstoppers, shredded wheat, peanut brittle, peanut brittle walkway. We got Dory swimming closer to the Kit Kat dock. I wonder if this is a piece of cotton or if that's cotton candy. Because if that's not cotton candy, man, is that a missed opportunity right there. Candy corn, even have a little star anise ribbon candy, a veggie garden, carrots, lettuce, radishes, and pumpkins. Look at the detail. I mean, this is insane. For me, there's one clear winner. Not only is the, the scope and the size amazing, the use of the materials. Look how realistic these icicles are and how the gingerbread is actually cut and shaped. And it actually looks like wood. We probably all shopped at the Pottery Barn before, but we're about to enter the real Pottery Barn right here. Let's go inside and let's see how it smells. This whole barn is covered in unfired pottery pots, bases, unfired clay that has that sweet, tangy aroma of water-based clay that very silty, earthy, aromatic. Kind of brings me back to ninth grade art class. Most of the work is digging the clay and hauling it back and preparing the clay, and cutting firewood for the kiln and making the glazes. And once you have the clay ready, it just takes a minute to shape a pot. Not works of art. It 
done this way for 6,000 years. All right, so what do we what do we have? peppermint drops and they're made from peppermint essence and sugar, so they would have been made in a confectionery oh, shop during the period. Were these used for medicinal purposes? They do have a medicinal benefit, but most people were growing mint in their garden, in their kitchen gardens, uh -huh. and they were um, um, kind of doing home remedies where they would make teas and things with peppermint. So this is more a confection. Like a treat. Yeah, or after dinner mint, you know, oh. so it is good for digestion. Yeah. Well, that tastes like Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> and my friend across the way, she actually has candied ginger, so another medicinal benefit, but also a confection. <laughs> and uh, let me just pop that. Right. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So candied. Yeah. So it's basically sugar. ginger root that has been peeled and 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 cut up and then just cooked with a lot of sugar. Oh wow. So when yeah. I smell this, it reminds yeah. me of the hot toddy. Yeah, yeah well, I always remember ginger ale when I was, you yeah, know, yeah. the patent medicine of our time was, was largely alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what what sort of ingredients? Uh, honey? What would be fermented? I'm not, not quite sure. Well, as, as far as I think that, I know, I know that rum was the, was the, the... Oh, really? The, yeah. Oh, but that's great. So by cooking it, does that make it less spicy or does it still maintain think, the spiciness? I think, it, I think it gets it soft enough so that the sugar is, is, is embedded in it. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Well, thank you for coming. And have you ever seen the film Funny Farm starring Chevy Chase? can't help but be reminded of that film being in this environment here, especially with these, these carolers. We don't need to talk about the smell of the horse droppings, do we? When you're making cane sugar in the 19th century and for a long time, what you're doing is it's the juice from the sugar cane that's cooked down to evaporate the water out of it. I found the North Pole Village entrance and look what's coming our way. Decorated with twinkle lights. Can't get over this little train though. Look at that. Where are they going? Smell chocolate. I'm not sure if it is fudge, if it is hot chocolate, hot cocoa. Let's do some investigation. Let's see if we can find. Oh, I'm getting more of it. We're getting closer. I think we found the culprit. Would you expect anything less from Mrs. Claus Bake Shop? Smell of hot, fudgy chocolate is everywhere. Oh my god. It's like brownies. It's like half-baked brownies. This is a very big place, and although there are a lot of people here this evening, it uh, is very private. You know, as you can see, there's no one really crowding around me. It, it's dark, which is not necessarily great for the camera, but definitely sets the mood if you're here in person. It's a very uh, has a wonderful ambiance to it. Oh, they roasted up some chestnuts here. If you want to try a sample. You know, I think that would be a fantastic idea. Fantastic idea? Fantastic idea. You know, this is something, funnily enough, I don't think I've ever, anyone ever had roasted chestnuts? I have. Have you? Yeah. We did, we did 50 pounds at the same time. Oh gosh, God bless you. 50 pounds. <laughs> Christmas by candlelight. They were not exaggerating when they said Christmas by candlelight. Everything in the village is candle lit.
there anyone out there that can identify this tree and the fruit that this tree is bearing? All right, you guys ready to get this day started? I have no idea where today is gonna lead. Everything today, completely improvised. Let's see what we can find. Cedar Lake kind of froze over last night. Very icy. And if you're asking, did you bring a candle? I certainly did. And surprise, surprise, it is a Yankee candle. This being uh, one of the Soho Living uh, collections. There's contrasting aromas here. Very soft peppermint candy. What are those after dinner mints? They're like little nuggets. They're very powdery. They dissolve in your mouth very fast. You know, you usually have the little tongs that you pull them out of the dish. So maybe not a peppermint swirl, but definitely one of those powdery, dissolvable after dinner mints. Whenever you can use that adjective soft when you have a snow themed candle, it's always really nice. There's also a baked goods element here. You could say sugar cookie, but here's where it gets strange in a super fun way. I'm getting stone fruit notes. Peaches, apricots, nectarines, plums, but it's not overly fruity because that peppermint is really the star of the show here. Now, if we wanted to go tropical and say tropical fruit, we could do that. Maybe even like dehydrated tropical fruits here. Silver Snowflake, Soho Living Yankee Candle Collection. This is a two wick tumbler. Excellent. Let's get on the road. Things are looking very white up in New Hampshire. I am somewhere in the vicinity of Plymouth, New Hampshire, climbing in elevation, and the snow coverage continues to get uh, thicker and thicker. So I'm in Ashland, New Hampshire. Stopped off to get a cup of coffee. Wanted to take a brief moment to break out the camera to get this view. And I think it's a good time, better time than ever, to introduce you to a friend of mine it's going to be making a lot of appearances. Uh, this is Santa Claus. I don't know if you've ever been acquainted, but Santa will be joining me on my journeys. Look out for him and leave him a comment as well, not just for me. Ask Santa any questions that you might have. He's just kind of chilling in the back of the car for now, getting a little shut-eye. All right, so I'm going to keep driving further north, but we're losing that sun quick, so we got to keep moving. Where am I? Seriously, this is getting extreme. I, I, I feel like I'm in a completely different world than I was 45 minutes ago. Oh my God, I wish you could see this. I mean, it's like a wall. It is a wall that reaches the sky. This is Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings. I gotta, I gotta put the camera down. There's snow all over the road, look at this. I gotta put the camera down. Wish me luck. 